A model steam engine test plant. This is part 10. Most of the things that I make are prototypes. They are seldom identical and this is no exception. The design develops and is constantly evolving into a well thought out and very functional end product. If you've been following this series and you've watched the previous episode, looking at this image you will notice that the part has changed considerably. I've put a boiler bush at one side and a tube extension at the other side. While I'm cleaning up the bottom part of this tank as a key for the paint, I'll tell you why the evolution happened. First of all, why the boiler bush? I realised that I did not need to fit a tap to this. I did, however, need the facility to drain the tank should I need to. That's why I fitted a boiler bush. Here I'm cleaning the ends of the metal base because I want to make sure that the paint that I put on sticks to the metal because brass is notoriously difficult to paint. In this clip you can clearly see that just about every part of the external surface of the tank is scratched using emery cloth that I believe is about 138. Fitting the boiler bush is one modification and here is the other one. In the last episode when I did a test fit I found a problem with the cast elbow. The casting wasn't machined perfectly straight and also when I fitted everything in place the long pipe covered one of the bolt holes in the base. As you can see I've replaced the externally threaded elbow with a short length of threaded pipe. These are PM research components. Now what I'm going to do is fit an elbow on the end of the piece of pipe but now the opposite is a problem. The piece of pipe is too long. I'm going to cut the thread a bit longer and shorten the pipe. Here though I'm assembling the pump to see how it all fits together. When I was doing this I kept sticking bits of wire into my fingers which are the split pins that held the thing together. They were very long, very sharp and very unsightly. Just like a girlfriend I used to know. It's definitely a bit of a mess and I don't like the twisted piece of wire that stops the drive pin for the ram from falling out. There was only one thing for it, fit some new split pins and make them neat. And here's the finished job, which is considerably better than it was. If I'm not going to fit a tap to the boiler bush, what am I going to fit? Well, the answer is simple. I'm going to fit a drain plug. Very much like a small version of a sump plug in a car. This is very neat and doesn't stick out beyond the edge of the baseboard. This was the point when I put the tank in position that I realised that the pipe from the tank to the inlet to the pump was too long. And after this, I re-threaded it, shortened it, and it's much better. In this clip, I'm looking at a better method of feeding the water to the boiler from the pump. Everything needs to line up and look good. I'm going to fit yet another PM Research cast elbow on the outlet from the pump. I don't really need to do this, it's just aesthetics. The pipe to the check valve adapter will not need to be quite so bendy. Once again, I found a problem with the threads. The elbow didn't fit into the pump all the way in smoothly, so I re-threaded the hole and cleaned it up, and then it did. To reply to a comment I got from a viewer, the threads per inch is not the issue, it's the thread pitch. I bought this vise ages ago, and I do use it a lot. If I want to remove a pipe union from a pipe, I would clamp the pipe in this vise, with plenty of pipe sticking out well past the vise, then I would heat the part up until the silver solder melted and remove it. The really good thing about this small vise is the jaws are plain so there's nothing to mark the work and it has V grooves cut in a vertical and horizontal plane. And as you can see it's also very useful for re-threading PM Research components. Once the parts were re-threaded I used some Loctite 542 as always to make sure that there are no leaks. In this clip I'm applying the Loctite 542, I've also fitted a washer and I'm tightening the part into the pump. When the elbow was in its correct position it was very tight, so I used a piece of surplus thick walled brass tubing through the hole in the end of the spanner to give me more leverage. The end result of this pump and the connection to the tank is very pleasing to the eye. It will be better when I fit an extra check valve and pipe it to the boiler. Here is the tank and pump assembly in its working position. Normally a hand pump feeds the check valve, even though the elbow makes the pipe line up better with the inlet to the check valve. 
The question is, where do I fit the check valve? Do I fit it here? I'll show the method I'm going to use in the next episode. In this clip I'm making some fine adjustments to the position just to make sure that everything lines up as it should and measuring each side to make sure that the tank assembly is in the centre. Here are my kit of parts ready to fit to the tank. I'm going to complete the scouring of the tank to give it a key for the paint. I've also done the inside too. It's time to rattle the rattle can. This is very important. When you use these cans, the agitator ball is only in there to do a certain thing. And that's to mix the paint to the correct consistency. While still shaking the can, I'm now in the outer part of the workshop and let the spraying begin. When spraying using these rattle cans, I find the best way to do it is to apply several thin coats and keep going round and applying the paint until everything is covered. The thing that the part is resting on is actually called a Lazy Susan. It's designed for being in the middle of a table to rotate cake stands and things like that. I use it to rotate a great many things except cakes that I can't eat because I'm diabetic. This video is running at a much higher speed than I actually did the job at. Today is a very nice day and it's actually warm in the workshop. That's unusual these days, it's usually damp and cold. The self-etched grey primer is what I normally use. The address details and phone number from where you can get it are on the tin. It's called self-etched grey primer but it doesn't actually etch into the brass because the acid is wrong. It's very good on ferrous metals, it really does bite in. But it also does stick to the brass. I've found it to be really good, the best I've used. And as usual, to finish, here's a gratuitous shot of the paint drying. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.